Shogun is a masterpiece. Its extremely talented cast performs in Japanese and English to tell a fascinating story about faith, sacrifice, and ambition. Creators Justin Marks and Rachel Kondo crafted a version of Feudal Japan filled with visual splendor, brutality, and intrigue, avoiding the temptation of big-budget spectacle in order to keep the focus firmly on the writing and characters. Shogun's strikingly beautiful compositions, sumptuous meals, and gorgeous costumes create an illusion of peace so strong that when the violence breaks out, it's sudden and harsh. The conflicts are never won or lost based on who's the best archer or swordsman. They're determined by the plots that were in place before the fighting began, and how good the attackers were at assessing their enemies and their motivations. <laughs> Highly faithful to James Clavell's best-selling novel, which previously inspired an NBC miniseries, a Broadway flop, and a text-based adventure game, Shogun kicks off in 1600, when Japan is on the brink of civil war. The tension is palpable in the premiere. A fragile harmony built on ritual and bureaucracy threatens to crack and plunge the country into a new era of bloody conquest. Lord Yoshi Toranaga starts the series seemingly backed into a corner, playing one of five regions put in place by Japan's recently deceased ruler to manage the country until his heir comes of age. Hiroyuki Sanada delivers a masterful performance, utterly regal even in scenes where Toranaga has to sneak away from his peers on the council, who have banded together to depose him. The character's confidence, piercing insights, and ability to contemptuously dress down anyone who defies him make it easy to see why he's considered so dangerous by the other regions. By positioning Toranaga as the underdog and having him slowly claw his way back from imminent death, the writers make it easy to root for his success even as the portrayal of his enemies becomes more nuanced and Toranaga's own motivations and actions grow more questionable. <laughs> He finds an unexpected lifeline when a ship of starving, scurvy-ridden Europeans, led by the brash English pirate John Blackthorn, washes ashore. Shogun could easily be a repeat of The Last Samurai, where Sonata mentored another transplanted Westerner, but the series takes more of an ensemble approach rather than centering on the story of John's experiences. He becomes a pawn for Toranaga and his rivals, who mostly refer to John as Anjin, the Japanese word for pilot, to manipulate for their own ends. Just as John comically bumbles around a beautifully manicured garden, he also disrupts carefully laid plans as he tries to pursue his own goals to draw Japan into European war. Oh, go on then. Might as well be now. But he's still a force to be reckoned with. Cosmo Jarvis lights up scenes with a cunning character, making it understandable why everyone wants to either befriend or kill John, representing the Protestant alliance between the Dutch and English at a time when Portuguese Catholics were the only European presence in Japan. John immediately comes into conflict with his church-appointed translators and has to make it clear that they don't actually speak for him. This involves hilarious wild gesticulations and strings of profanity. John never develops a miraculous mastery of the language and the writers constantly find novel ways to use the communication barrier between him and his captors. It's a source of humor in the early episodes, as they often unintentionally echo each other in their threats, mockery, and accusations of barbarism. It also shows John's character development, from a moment of tenderness, where he tries to crudely express his gratitude, to a demonstration of how he cleverly uses prepared phrases to hide his ignorance as best he can. But here we are. Nestor Carbonell makes the absolute most of his brief time as Rodriguez, an equally foul-mouthed Spanish sailor who provides John with an early primer on life in Japan. But the true third pillar of Shogun is John's long-term guide Todamariko, played by Anna Sawai, a vassal of Toranaga who converted to Catholicism after a terrible tragedy. The character might seem to have the makings of a cookie-cutter forbidden love interest, but Mariko is driven by a quest for vengeance that leads her to become the linchpin of the series' biggest conflict. Mariko explains to John the concept of the Eightfold Fence, a wall built around one's emotions to keep them from being read by others. So why beautifully portrays that restraint as she placidly handles John's stubbornness and insistence? We control nothing beyond that. It makes the moments where her composure breaks all the more powerful and sells the way she can turn a line of poetry or a formal request for passage into an attack on Toranaga's rivals, 
The roiling storm behind Mariko's Eightfold Fence serves as a microcosm of Shogun's Japan. Shogun is television at its best, using its budget to create a gorgeous, immersive world, but never letting spectacle detract from its emphasis on complex character arcs. The performances are compelling, aided by writing that flows from crude humor to poetic drama in a way that brings depth to protagonists and even minor characters. The series seamlessly blends intrigue, humor, romance, and action in a beautifully executed limited series that keeps delivering surprises until its perfect ending. Just remember, we live and we die. For more TV reviews, check out what we thought of Avatar The Last Airbender and the first part of The Bad Batch Season 3. And for everything else, stick with IGN.